Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I'm so happy to meet you. If not, then welcome back. As always, please subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications bell, and you will get notified each time I have a new upload. Also, if you like the sounds of this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to comment down below and keep the conversation going. As always, keep the comments nice. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be doing a list of do's and don'ts for parents of autistic children. I hope this is helpful and I hope that you get something from it. Um, as always, these th this is all personal opinions, um, but I think a lot of the autistic community would agree with me on most of these. So first up, do take care of yourself. I don't want this video to seem like an attack on parents or saying oh you should be doing this and you're doing this wrong or whatever so do take care of yourself take care of your mental health and of your well-being uh, and I just wanted to put that out there first moving along don't use disrespectful language when talking about your autistic child and when I say disrespectful language I mean talking about because I hear this a lot on maybe like radio programs or posts on social media and it's where parents might talk very much in detail about maybe like toileting issues and things like that and I feel like sharing that out there for everybody to hear is unnecessary and also I feel like um it's something that is personal to the child and it's not something that needs to be shared it's similar to the thing of some parents videoing meltdowns and sharing them um, I again there is no need to do this this is all very personal and you wouldn't do it with your typical child and so I feel like filming meltdowns talking in a disrespectful way about your children is such a huge no-no and I feel like it's so important to avoid that Um, a lot of things like that are you know are personal and don't need to be discussed online radio television with you know groups of people or whatever it may be so moving along then do celebrate a diagnosis your child is alive and um, this is not a bad thing your child has not been diagnosed with a terminal illness. Your child can go on to achieve whatever they may want to achieve in life, can go on to have a happy life. The main thing is that they have the supports that they need and that you as a parent supports them in whatever way they might need and find a way to support them in life that they can go on and live a happy life and achieve anything they want to achieve. I don't like this idea of grieving when a child gets a diagnosis like that. I, I do see it a lot and I see this thing of, oh, you must grieve and all this. It's, it's, I don't like that idea. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's any reason to grieve at all. It's not a negative thing. It's a positive thing. Um, and all the best thing to do is to listen to so many people within the autistic community and and learn from them and see that this isn't a negative thing this is a good thing and you don't need to grieve your child your child is alive your child is there um moving along then and this is a big don't don't choose aba or pbs or pecs or related therapies now i am not going to go into it in a huge way because i do have a number of videos on my channel talking about aba talking about alternatives to aba so I do feel that they will be worth checking out if you want to know more. The main thing is do not choose ABA. There are alternatives. For example, and I'll leave their details down below, if you check out Awesome Training, they have courses and for teachers, SNAs, parents, and it just goes through that there is no need for ABA. And... In a recent report, um, the Autism Strategy Report, 
um, we've seen that there has been a huge mention of moving away from ABA, transitioning away from ABA because it is harmful. There is so much evidence and proof out there and people's stories out there that say that this is harmful and it, it, it should be banned, quite frankly. Uh, ABA stands for Applied Behaviour Analysis. Briefly, it works from a feeling that the autistic child or adult is less, needs to change and needs to change to fit in with what society deems as normal. Um, and it just works from a very negative place. So please avoid ABA and do check out my other videos and hopefully they will be a help as well. Next up, do research schools. And this ties in with my last point as well. Research schools, ask questions, find out what they use. Do they use ABA? If they do, it's not the school for your child. Don't be afraid to ask questions like, can they stim? Are they going to be st are they going to stop them stimming or, or try to change that behavior? Or are they going to try and stop what is autistic traits and what comes naturally to autistic children? So ask questions, research, and um, make sure that your child is going to the right place. And if, for example, they say they use ABA, PBS, PEX, then it is just not the place for an autistic child. Next up, don't use incorrect and outdated terminology. This is something that really annoys me and I still see it so much now, despite there being so much about it. Terminology is important. The first thing I'm gonna mention is person first language versus identity first language. I feel like this is one that you've definitely heard of and you've definitely heard of it being something that the autistic community feels strongly about. So when I talk about that, I mean saying somebody has autism versus saying somebody is autistic. The autistic community prefer to say someone is autistic. So I am autistic, Kit Ann is autistic, not Kit Ann has autism, not Kit Ann not I have autism. And um, this is really important. The correct terminology is so important. And it, it comes from a place of respect, really. And it is so, so important when we're talking about your child saying, my child is autistic, rather than my child has autism. Another thing is high and low functioning autism. It don't exist. Nobody wants to be described as low functioning. It's disrespectful and it's not right. And autism is a spectrum. Everybody on that spectrum has different levels of support needs. So forget about your high functioning and your low functioning. Also, Asperger's, and I'm gonna do a video on this as well. Asperger's hasn't been an official diagnosis for many years. And Asperger's kind of causes a bit of a divide in the community. Obviously, if you're someone who was diagnosed with Asperger's before it was no longer included in the DSM-5 and you want to use that, absolutely fine. But it is no longer a diagnosis and there is a huge history with Asperger's, which as I said, I'm going to go into in another video. I'm not going to go into it in a huge way in this, but they are kind of the big things when it comes to terminology. Next up. Do get involved with the autistic community. I feel like this is probably one of the most important ones. So when I say get involved, listen to actually autistic voices. You know, use the hashtag actually autistic and you'll see posts on Instagram, you'll see TikTok videos, you'll see YouTube videos, and then check out organizations such as Newer Pride Ireland, for example. Um, and these are places where you will hear autistic voices. And hearing autistic voices is so, so important because the only people that know fully what's like to be autistic is autistic people. And so listening to autistic voices, reading books by autistic people, that's where you're going to get the most important information you need moving forward with your child. So that is, if there's anything to take away from this, that is one of the most important ones. 
check out actually autistic voices. It is so, so important. Next up, don't believe everything you read online. There are so many harmful organizations and websites and sources out there and how you know that these sources or websites are not what you should be looking at. If they're using language like with autism, if they're talking about or promoting ABA or PBS or PECS, or if they're saying autism can be cured, these are harmful sources, organizations, and they should be avoided at all costs. One example that you will see straight away when you start researching is Autism Speaks in America. Avoid these, absolutely avoid them. On to my very last one, and this is a do. Do love and encourage your child. <clears throat> As I said before, you don't need to grieve. Your child is alive. Uh, find ways to help your child. Find ways that will help your child moving forward and let them lead the way. See where their special interests lie and encourage them in their special interests. Um, encouragement is so important for any child and that's no different with an autistic child. So do love and encourage your child. I really, really hope that today's video is helpful. I really, really hope you got something from it. Um, uh, do check out my other videos and thank you very, very much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.